Let's go to the White House right now. Our chief White House correspondent, Jim Acosta, is joining us. Jim, after days of uncertainty, the president has now actually invoked what's called the Defense Production Act. That's right, Wolf. Definitely some action, but still some confusion in Washington on the coronavirus. President Trump has signed the stimulus bill into law and invoked the Defense Production Act, as you said, to order General Motors to produce uh, badly needed hospital ventilators. But we are still waiting for clarity from the White House on how exactly the administration plans to start reopening parts of the U.S. while the nation is still battling this pandemic. With the number of dead in the U.S. growing rapidly from the coronavirus, top Trump administration officials are sounding like they're throwing cold water on the president's goal to reopen the U.S. by Easter. Well, the president expressed really an aspirational goal. The president said he would love to see it around Easter, but, uh, but whenever that day is that we can responsibly begin to open up portions of the country, but let me be very clear, there's going to be areas of the country where we need to continue to lean into mitigation efforts. During a CNN town hall, coronavirus task force Dr. Anthony Fauci pointed to the rising number of cases, arguing that's no time to slam the brakes on social distancing. That's when you got to hunker down, nail down, mitigate, mitigate, mitigate. The president has been all over the place on the need for medical supplies, tweeting he wants to see top automakers producing hospital ventilators. General Motors must immediately open their stupidly abandoned Lordstown plant in Ohio or some other plant and start making ventilators. Now, Ford, get going on ventilators fast. President tweeted, invoke P. Invoke P means Defense Production Act, the law that gives them the power to force companies to manufacture sorely needed virus-fighting equipment. But on Fox News, the president questioned New York Governor Andrew Cuomo's plea for tens of thousands of ventilators for his state. I have a feeling that uh, a lot of the numbers that are being said in some areas are just bigger than they're going to be. I don't believe you need 40,000 or 30,000 ventilators. You know, you go into major hospitals sometimes, they'll have two ventilators. And now, all of a sudden, they're saying, can we order 30,000 ventilators? Cuomo explained he's expecting his state's medical emergency will get much worse. I hope we don't need 30,000 ventilators. I hope some natural weather change happens overnight and kills the virus globally. That's what I hope. But that's my hope, that's my emotion, that's my thought. The numbers say you may need 30,000. President even attacked Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, who's battling her own coronavirus hotspot. We've had a big problem with uh, the young, a woman governor from, you know who I'm talking about, from Michigan. I want to thank Republicans and Democrats for coming together, setting aside their differences, and putting America first. The president signed the $2 trillion stimulus bill, passed overwhelmingly by Democrats and Republicans in both houses. No bill is perfect, but we want to make sure that at least comes near uh, part of the way to being sufficient. I object. But they had to use parliamentary procedures to bypass a stunt pulled by GOP Congressman Thomas Massey, who forced lawmakers to return to Washington for a possible formal vote, putting the members and their families at risk. President slammed Massey as a third-rate grandstander who just wants the publicity. Former Secretary of State John Kerry topped that, tweeting, Breaking news, Congressman Massey has tested positive for being an a-hole. He must be quarantined to prevent the spread of his massive stupidity. Finally, something the president and I can agree on. Massey was asked about his newfound infamy. I'm going to call you a third-rate grandstander. I'm at least second-rate. And the White House is expected to sort out its plans for the nation's social distancing guidelines over the weekend. But the president's letter to the nation's governors yesterday hinting those measures may be relaxed has already caused confusion on the coronavirus task force. One source close to the task force told me earlier today the letter is just, quote, hanging out there and getting back to the president signing that stimulus bill just a short while ago. We can show you a photo of that on screen. This is from the White House. Uh, two things to point out in this photograph, Wolf. One is the officials in the room, including the president, are not practicing social distancing. The other very important thing to point out, very critical here, uh, according to the White House, no Democrats were invited to this signing. Wolf, in an hour like this, uh, where the president has said uh, for days that the country needs to come together, you could not see that in that photo. Yeah, well, that was an awful decision. Uh, you would have thought the president would have wanted to use this opportunity to show some bipartisan support on behalf of the American people. 
uh, have they explained why no Democrats, the Speaker, the Minority Leader in the Senate, why they weren't invited? They have not, Wolf, and our colleague up on Capitol Hill, Manu Raju, says the Speaker was not invited. As we know, they have not, uh, the President and the Speaker have not spoken uh, for months uh, on a personal level. So obviously, uh, there isn't bipartisanship in the air when it comes to uh, that relationship. But obviously, this was an opportunity where the President could have uh, tried to turn over a new leaf and invite some Democrats over to the Oval Office for something uh, as big and momentous a, at this, and it just seems to be an opportunity missed. Well, it certainly was uh, a, a serious opportunity missed on behalf of the American people. All right, Jim Acosta, thank you very much. Let's get some more on all of this right now. The Michigan governor is joining us, Gretchen Whitmer. Uh, governor, I know you're incredibly busy, but thank you so much for joining us, spending a few moments with us. Uh, the president is now using his powers as president under what's called the Defense Production Act to direct General Motors to begin producing ventilators. Uh, General Motors, largely in, in your beautiful state. Will those, vent those ventilators get to hospitals in Michigan and elsewhere soon enough to save lives? Well, we certainly hope so. You know, General Motors is um, a, a quintessential American company that has contributed to building the middle class in our country, helped uh, make Michigan and the United States the arsenal of democracy to win World War II. The leadership at General Motors is top notch, and I think that they are going to rise to this challenge. It won't happen overnight, though. Switching over from uh, building cars to building something as complicated as a ventilator is going to take a while, and we don't have a lot of time to waste. And that's why I'm glad to see this action. I would love to see more of this, more of the um, strategic uh, powers of the of the president to be used nationally. We need a national strategy. This patchwork of laws based on who the governors are really isn't the best um, strategy going forward. And, and I think we all need to lock arms and not fight one another, but fight COVID-19. Well, that's an important point you're making, uh, Governor. The president, as you well know, he uh, personally attacked you on Fox News uh, last night. He said he was having, in his words, a big problem with uh, that young woman governor, and he referred to that young woman governor being from Michigan. So far, he's refused to act on your request for a major disaster declaration. Are your political differences, you're a Democrat, he's a Republican, uh, preventing you from getting the badly needed uh, assistance that will help a lot of people in Michigan? Well, I can tell you this. Michigan, like states across the country, Republican and Democratic-led, we are struggling to get the PPE that we need. We are struggling to make sure that our nurses and doctors on the front line have the N95 masks that are so precious. We've gotten a few of our shipments out of the strategic, uh, the national stockpile. But the fact of the matter is the latest one had zero of these masks, and that's what is so crucial right now. I'm not going to fight with anybody I'm going to fight for the people of Michigan to fight to make sure that we've got what we need to combat COVID-19. It is spreading so quickly in our state, up 801 cases today, 32 more people passed away in the last 24 hours. We need help. We need leadership and we need to put political differences aside and focus on the real enemy. And that's the virus. I know you haven't heard anything directly from the president, but have you heard anything from the White House, from other officials there uh, about your request? Well, I know that they've received it, and I have talked to the vice president, uh, Mike Pence, a number of times, and I'm grateful for that opportunity. We have been working diligently with Army Corps of Engineers, making sure that uh, we're working with the FEMA. Uh, they have a seat in our state emergency operations center. We're just doing everything we can to pull out all of the stops. And I know Mike DeWine in Ohio and governors across this country are doing the same. We need to make sure that we have got the materials we need to protect people. I know you told a local Michigan radio station this morning that medical supply vendors uh, are being told, uh, in your words, not to send stuff to Michigan, not to send stuff to Michigan. Uh, what, what did you mean by that? Well, we've entered into a number of contracts, and as we are getting closer to the date when shipments are supposed to come in, they're getting canceled or they're getting delayed. And we've been told that the Fed... They're going first to the federal government. And I know Michigan's not alone. I saw Governor Charlie Baker, from, Republican from Massachusetts, say essentially the same thing. Same with Mayor Garcetti out in Los Angeles. This is an issue that we are confronting as a nation where we are bidding against one another, where we are struggling to grab every 
um, PPE that we can get our hands on. This is part of why I'm hopeful that in addition to the Defense Protection Act, our Production Act, that we have adopted a national strategy and, and really focus on ramping up, especially where we see the growth so fast, like in Detroit and, and Oakland County and Wayne County here in Michigan.